morning. Welcome to some gentle yoga. We're, <laughs> we're going to start in a reclining pose. It might be a little dangerous, but we'll give it a try. Um, now you can either use a blanket, <clears throat> kind of rolled up to make a long pillow like that down the length of your spine, or if you happen to have a long pillow already sort of <clears throat> ready, <laughs> you can use just a long pillow. And we'll do a little like a, almost like a fish pose. We're just gonna open up the upper back here a bit, depending on the thickness <laughs> of whatever it is you're reclining on. It might be, oh, you can also use a yoga book. Put one up by your shoulder blades, like right under the shoulder blades and one under your head if you've got that or an extra pillow. <clears throat> so we get this little, little sort of hint of a fish pose. <laughs> the legs can be out straight or you can put the feet on the floor in a kind of constructive rest version or you can put the feet together like a little butterfly. We'll take a moment <clears throat> to settle into this this exact space where we are right here right now. This is the environment around us and all the shenanigans that might be going on. <laughs> we'll just let all the shenanigans happen while we're hanging out here. subtitled this the sort of specialness of a yoga studio uh, going to a special kind of set aside space for yoga but I've you know most of my practice over the course of my life has been practice at home <laughs> so <laughs> so this feels familiar right? um, can we come to our space here our familiar home space with a fresh set of awareness, a fresh set of eyes. You feel yourself sort of those areas that are touching the ground into the floor. And so depending on the posture that I'm in, different parts of my body are in contact with the ground. And in this case, my elbows and my like the backs of my hand have a kind of unique placement on the floor. It should be like normal starting postures for me generally don't. So that's kind of fun and interesting. My hips touch the floor in a slightly different manner than if I were seated or standing. Certainly my legs and my heels are in touch with the ground. So feeling all of those places just kind of gently descend. Release into the floor a bit. Feel the ground underneath us. And I like to kind of picture myself just contacting the earth, even though there's a little space between my actual floor here and the earth. In my mind, they're the same. And then you might even sort of imagine yourself sort of rooting down into the earth, growing some roots from all of these little bony areas that are in touch with the ground. And the thing about rooting is that there's a reciprocity to it. So the more energy I send down into the earth, the more I get a kind of bounce back or a kind of lift back from her. Quality 
quality of rooting is both solid and light at the same time. I think you find the same thing to be true. Couple more breaths. So I'm going to gently sort of roll myself to the side and slip the pillow out. You've got two blocks, take those out. You've got a blanket, take that out, whatever you might have been using. Oh. And then just pause for a moment and notice the shift. So for me, there's this really kind of lovely expanding <laughs> sensation to the upper back. I'm going to emphasize that by protracting my shoulder blades way out to the side, kind of curling my spine and pressing that spot oh, between my shoulder blades right into the ground and just rock it there. to make sure that I have enough room over my head that my arms can extend without running into the furniture. So you can adjust that as you need. And then take a moment, if you like, to windshield wiper your legs or pull your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little happy baby kind of shape. Mm. So for the most part, for this little shoulder business that um, we're about to engage in, uh, we're going to keep the legs in a position that makes the pelvis neutral. So for me, that means constructive rest, where my feet are on the floor in such a way that my pelvis is neutral, my hip flexors are relatively soft, um, and there, there's no tug on my skeleton, um, especially on the spine and the shoulders. So the shoulders can hang out wherever they're willing to hang out in this moment. And initially I just want to feel like, where are they? <laughs> like, what does my shoulder feel like? So kind of noticing what parts of my shoulder are in contact with the floor, what parts of the shoulder are not in contact with the floor, and then noticing the quality of that contact. So like my right shoulder blade feels like it is slightly more pressure on the floor than the left, for example. And there's kind of, little bit of tension down the sort of outer portion of my arm as I rest it here on the floor and that you know that's my starting point so I'll do a little comparing as we go along now I can lift my arm bones up and bring them over my head and bring them back with relatively little shoulder um, movement but what I'm gonna try to do is actually propel my arms from the shoulder blades so I'm going to start by retracting the shoulder blades, and that's going to be my starting point. And retraction just simply, again, means that you bring the shoulder blades towards each other in the center. Then I'm going to depress my shoulder blades, which um, is just means I'm going to pull them down towards the uh, you know, lower in my back. And then as I bring my arms up, I'm going to protract my shoulder blades. I'm going to reach that out, and then as I go overhead, I'm going to elevate the shoulder blade, try to bring it up by my ear. And so that pattern of movement is super duper simple, but when I move from the shoulder blade instead of from the arm bones, um, it's very interesting. And I'm gonna have to work against the floor a little bit oh, to make all these movements happen. Now, if for whatever reason there's an injury to your shoulder and you can't get your arm bone all the way up overhead, don't worry about that. Just go as far up as you feel comfortable and then come down. Let's do two more of those. We're propelling ourselves from these <laughs> big muscles in our back. an interesting sort of sound as I get near the very tippy top. It might just be me working against the floor, I don't know. <laughs> I think that was enough, but let's go up 
so that our arms are now in the most protracted state they could be, the shoulder blades and the arms are straight up. So we're just gonna work with protraction and retraction, kind of working with gravity here. So we're gonna retract the shoulder blades, kind of hug them in against the resistance of the floor and then protract them and kind of push them out. Feel that space between the shoulder blades broaden out. And then hug them in and push them back out and hug them in push them back out and then as we hug them in I'm gonna really snuggle those shoulder blades into the midline and grab my right upper arm now the muscles of my upper back are gonna try to hold my shoulder blade where it is and my left arm is gonna try to pull my right shoulder blade out neither side is gonna win exactly there's just gonna be a stalemate between these two actions holding the shoulder blade in and trying to pull it out, the shoulder blade's gonna stay mostly stable. But I'm fighting on both sides to make that happen. So we've got some isometric shoulder release happening here. Now this is great for the rhomboids, for the subscapularis, and then also for it's part of the trapezius, the kind of lower middle section of the trapezius. Give me two more breaths. Fighting that shoulder blade in just a little bit against my left hand and then I'm going to release the arm and come back and again sort of protract the shoulder blades and then retract them draw them in see if I can notice any differences between the left and right shoulder blade now and retract them in and then I'm really going to snuggle and then reach over grab my left arm and do the same thing so I'm going to pull my left arm to the right and simultaneously try to hold the shoulder blade in place Look like much is happening but hopefully it feels like a lot and I just realized I was trying to help with my inner thighs so I'm relaxing my legs now. <laughs> I like how some body parts can be sympathetic to others. You're like, I'll help. <laughs> Even if they're not really doing anything. in the effort and take a couple more breaths. Release that arm. And then one more time, protract them and then retract them. Oh, let's see if I can feel any differences. And then I'm gonna lower my arms all the way back down and just sort of give them a little shake. And then Coming back to awareness of my arms resting here now, is there any difference between how they're resting now versus how they were resting at the beginning of this? And for me, this is sort of a magical little piece of work. It's super simple, not especially exciting, but, <laughs> but my right shoulder blade is now no longer heavier on the floor. It's not poking into the floor in the same exaggerated way. And it also feels like the top of my shoulder has rolled back a little bit. There's just a little bit more broadness, kind of softness across my first and second rib collarbone area. And uh, frankly, I find that delightful, <laughs> like all by itself. So let's do some, like a little bit of a twist with the legs. Now you can, I'm gonna come back up my mat just a little bit here because I don't need the overhead space anymore. You can use a pillow or a blanket if you like for your twist. I'm just gonna feel out both sides of this twist. Normally, I like to go to the right first, but every now and then I switch it up and I'll go to the left. I think I'm gonna do that today. So, we'll take the legs over to one side and you, you can certainly just settle them onto the floor and sort of wrap mine around one another and around this pillow. And then I'm going to experiment with where my shoulder wants to sit. I want it to sit on the floor. And then I can decide, do I want a bigger chest stretch? Do I want that arm to go overhead and hang out with that shape? And so you kind of experiment with how you want that arm to work with the twist. Mm. 
Let me if I keep the arm closer, it works deeper in the shoulder. I can feel it sort of working on the pec minor, kind of right on the inside edge of the shoulder blade. Whereas if I go big, <laughs> get it out to the side, then I feel more like the pec major, so it stretches me across the chest, and that is interesting too. And where do you want the focus? I'm going to go for this more subtle focus deeper in the shoulder. And then kind of pressing this hip down just a little bit, get a little space between my hip and my rib. release right here so I'm going to take one more breath and then I'm going to come on back to the middle now and let's do that on the other side and I'm going to do the same kind of exploration Kind of rolling my shoulder down, experimenting a little bit with the relationship of the twist and the arm placement. Sometimes I make the same choice <laughs> of like where to put the focus and sometimes I choose differently for the second side. It just feels like the it's helpful to really in, you know reintroduce yourself to your body parts. <laughs> <laughs> and say, hmm. maybe on this side I need a slightly different position. Because they are different, aren't they? interesting to me because again this is kind of more typically the way I would go first so letting this one be the second side does make it different <laughs> yeah, there's some you know fun metaphors in there for me about shaken up habits and other things interesting to me to notice what I notice. <laughs> and I'm just going to settle in and we'll stay for a few more breaths.
inkling of this release on the side of my waist is what I'm often kind of watching for, paying attention to. And so I'm going to take two more breaths. Then roll back onto my back. I'm going to roll all the way onto my side. Because uh, we're going to come up to a seated position. So you might start with whatever is your most comfortable version of the seat. <laughs> just to get, get a place to begin. You sort of feel where it lands, where your body lands for this moment. We're gonna to come to a V shape, but in the moment, it can be kind of interesting just to see where, it, where we're starting. Okay, now I'm gonna roll up a blanket so that it can live in the space right behind my knee. So bring the legs to a V. That does not have to be the biggest V you can make with the legs. It can be a little more gentle than that. And then if you're like me and the back of your knee tends to kind of hyperextend or feel a little sensitive, fill it in with a blanket and see if that helps. Of the knee is a really sensitive point. There's all kinds of attachments there and there's um, marma points and acupuncture points back there that are kind of interesting. Uh, so let me be gentle with it. <laughs> so I found myself kind of up on my sit bones and the uh, legs in a V and I'm gonna just start with deciding on a direction. Like, Do I wanna go to the right or the left? I'm feeling inclined to go left. So I'm going to bend my left knee. I'm going to leave the right one straight. And I'm going to start by just folding over the left leg. And there's a kind of quality to doing this. So my sit bone wants to come up off the floor on the right side, which I can allow to happen or I can try to resist. Sometimes I do that in a pulsation, kind of resist it, spread my toes out and then relax the leg and let it happen. Work with the breath on that. <laughs> now I'm gonna inhale my way up next time I take a breath. Ooh, I'm going to turn to the middle and I'm going to fold. And so now this is a little different. <laughs> different than folding over this left leg. It makes me kind of want to lean a little right to left to sort of feel the a little bit of movement around my side waist and my lower back. It might make your body want to do a rounder shape or a little bit more length, you can just feel it out. So I'm sort of leaning into my right sit bone a little heavier and then leaning into my left sit bone a little heavier and letting that kind of cascade up to the base of my skull. And do one more on each side. I'm going to come up, rotate just enough so that I can do a little side stretch over this right leg. I might want to hold on to the toes or press my elbow into my inner thigh. Or I might want to let it be a little more relaxed. <laughs> and test out the various options and see if there's one that is your favorite.
of my favorite kind of ideas about working with yoga poses is that they're not really solid objects. They're more like a coral reef. There's all this living tissue hanging out around this bony structure. And I'm bending in a particular direction. And can I kind of allow myself that sort of quality of tidal movement within a pose? One more breath. Now, I'm gonna lean a little bit forward, swing my arm back and let that help me come out of the pose. There's a little less resistance against my lower back, which I often find much nicer. All right, coming back to my V, I'm just gonna pause for a moment and notice now if there's a difference between my left and right hemispheres, which I was expecting there would be, and indeed, <laughs> just slightly. Oh. Of course, we're going to do the other side. So I'm going to bend my right leg, settle in, and fold over it. And make any adjustments that I need to. Now this side <laughs> is very different for me. For whatever reason, my rib cage and my thigh just find each other much more quickly. And there's just a kind of sense of real solidness to this side. The other side feels a little bit more lifted and unrooted. <laughs> Just working with what's happening over here rather than try to force it to be like the other side. up, turn it to the middle and fold back in. And again, you have all those sort of little options of how you place the spine, how you relate to the pose. Last time I was really into this kind of rocking back and forth. I might test that out again. It's just feeling like I want to be more solid on this side. So I'm just going to let myself go. Kind of noticing, kind of keying into how the breath is playing with this kind of tensile, uh, that's the word I'm using, but I might be using it wrong, but this kind of resistance between the ba base of my skull and the, um, the kind of sacrum, the area where my hip wants to hold onto my spine, and then the, the kind of space between that's gently suspended between those two points. And then that kind of resistance and where it, and the way the breath kind of interplays with that. Oh, that's interesting. All right, come in. I can stay with that for a while longer, but we have things to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna come over here and do my side stretch on this other side here. Definitely revisit that. Take one more big breath. And again, I'm gonna let my breath help me come out of that shape. Come back to the V. All 
and then back to my most favoriteest, comfortableest <laughs> sitting position just to reacquaint myself <laughs> with where I landed here at the end of our practice. Hopefully, there's a little bit more freedom in your shoulders and your spine, and maybe a little in the hips too, to go into your morning with. So thank you for joining me. <laughs> Let's take a nice big breath together. And a deep sigh. Enjoy the rest of your day. Namaste. Happy New Year.